Hey everybody, uh, let's talk sustainability incentives. This is me, I'm Mark Ambler, and uh, I gave this presentation to the U.S. Marine Corps civilian employees back on March 29th, and now I'm going to give it to Weston. Here it goes. So uh, I'm going to talk about efficiency, renewable power, food security, and transportation, and this all relates to residential sustainability. So what you can do at home to become more sustainable. Bottom line up front, government gave me 30,000 bucks since 2006. My electric bill is 20 bucks a month and I don't stop at gas stations. The chart on the right is how much money the government gave me and the chart on the left is what I uh, paid for those incentives, essentially. So this is the house. It's a blank pallet, big backyard, a typical Hawaii house, single wall construction, an old kitchen. The house was built in 58. Really a blank pallet, uh, 1,100 square foot house. First thing you do is start with a smart meter. So I, I suggest the whole house energy meter. Costs 320 bucks. Hawaii gives a rebate, 100 bucks. I installed it myself. You might want to get an electrician to help you. Uh, and you can also use a wall plug energy meter uh, for 20 bucks, like this kilowatt on the left here. But I suggest the whole house energy meter because you can also see how much your lights are consuming, your uh, stove is consuming. So things that the plug-in meter wouldn't get, you can get with a whole house energy meter. And throughout this presentation, I have some things that are green, uh, that have green tables things that have orange tables and things that have red tables. As you can see, the green one, the whole house energy meter, I suggest strongly. Orange, yeah, you can use it, but it's not optimal. Red, I suggest not to do it. So this is some data for a three bedroom home on Oahu for Hawaii Energy. And they say your water heater consumes 40% of your, your power at home and your refrigerator 25%. Now this is a non-air conditioned house so you're assuming you have window AC and just use it on hot summer days. I saw you know similar uh, energy consumption at my home. So we got to deal with the heat first. And typical ways you think, okay, so I change the windows, I add insulation, double wall the house. That's great. Cost you know 150 bucks for the insulation, 1500 for the windows. But no, that's that's not the biggest thing that that changed the temperature of the house. Uh, really what did it was a solar fan in the top right. 300 bucks. I actually put it in myself. Hawaii Energy gave me a rebate of 50 bucks. And peak temperature in the house dropped like 10 degrees. So you have to have an attic. You have to have a closed attic uh, to make this work. Uh, I've had a uh, friend that put one in on an open beam ceiling. And you need some kind of fixture on the inside. A little more complicated. But do this. Do the top thing on the right. Energy Star AC as well. Uh, it's easy. You buy it, you put it in your window, and this thing consumes less than a kilowatt when it's on. Uh, Hiko gave us a rebate of 75 bucks, but it's sad to say that's not available anymore. Do all these things. Solar water heater, great investment. Reduce your money, uh, reduce your energy consumption at your house, and your uh, increase your wallet size. Um, we went from a plasma TV to this Energy Star TV and that made a huge difference. This Energy Star TV only consumes like 400 watts where the plasma was over a kilowatt. Ridiculous. So CFLs, you get a dollar off, they, they credit that at the cash register and fridges, if you have an old fridge, get rid of the thing. They'll give you 50 bucks. Uh, if you trade in an old refrigerator, I think there's an additional rebate as well. So do that. Here's a list of all the incentives, federal, you get that 30% solar water heating. Uh, they don't tax you for the state incentives as well. And state tax incentives in Hawaii, 35% solar water heating. And there's a list of uh, all the appliances that you can buy that they give you money for as well. So, Renewable power. This is really the fun stuff. Everybody loves PV. So back in 2008, we put in $15,000 worth of PV, which included the inverter. Back then, there was a cap on the federal rebate, so we only got seven thousand bucks back. But the next year, we put the second half of the system at ten grand and got two thirds of that back. 
And the second year we installed it, we funded it with a 0% one year uh, loan, uh, interest free loan. And so we did it at the end of the year and had our tax rebate before we even had to pay for the system. So it's great. We also tried a, a wind turbine. Don't do this. I don't think it's market ready yet. The grid tie uh, inverter was, there was only one supplier in Sweden and it really never worked quite right. These were built to charge 12 volt batteries and until that changes, until the market adapts to that and provides uh, uh, low cost residential uh, equipment to make that happen, don't do that. So also with the biomass gasification, this is early. I mean, people are celebrating one day of runtime. You don't want to have to clean this thing out. It's $18,000. You would really be an early adopter if you got that. Um, so this is essentially what Everett Rogers put together. It's a uh, concept of diffusion of innovation. Anytime a technology comes out, uh, if you can't buy it and you make it, you're an innovator. If you can buy it, but there's only one or two choices and it's really expensive, you're an early adopter. Well, I think residential biomass and wind are here. In Hawaii, res residential solar is, is early majority. So right now is a great time to buy solar, and I would suggest it. When I bought it, it was 10 bucks a watt. Uh, this is some data from the National Renewable Energy Lab in Hawaii. Uh, they say it went down to 7 bucks in 2010. Well, I got some live data from 2011, 2012 that it's down to 550 a watt, which is ridiculous. I, I'm, we're going to expand our system to cover the electric vehicle, and I, I think it's a great um, idea to use PV. So here's the tax credits. The federal credits have an expiration of 2016, and there's no expiration on the Hawaii tax credits. Uh, there's a $5,000 max per system for solar in Hawaii, but uh, if you install multiple systems, people have been getting the credit for uh, multiple systems on their houses. They also don't tax the renewable energy improvements to your house for 25 years, so you don't in, your real property tax doesn't increase. And they have a state back loan program that caps banks at seven percent. This so those incentives last till 2016. There's no deadline on the Hawaii ones, but this is what makes you want to do this right away. Hiko has put a 15 percent cap on on grid uh, tie systems. So if you're in an area that's red, you have to spend $45,000 to do a grid tie study prior to installing PV on your house. Big barrier, it's not going to work if you're in a red area. So before your area gets red, I would suggest install PV. And this is data through December 2011. Now we took a stab at food security and you'll see this whole section is red because grocery stores are really efficient um, and it's hard to, hard to deal with that, hard to uh, compete with that. And I'll, I'll talk about why. So we put in this rain catchment at 150 bucks in parts. Uh, I put in some sweat equity. See the black pipe there, it's a first catch that catches all your leaves and your dirt and your stuff uh, so it doesn't get into the water. And then we put some elevation on the, those catchment devices so that it could trickle back to a uh, 450 square foot garden that we put in the backyard. Tilling is very labor intensive. We added topsoil and make, made the soil uh, conditioned a little bit better. We put in uh, lettuce, cabbage, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants. We tried cauliflower and never worked. Uh, so essentially this whole garden, uh, you know, it, it was really labor intensive. I put red on here. If this is your hobby, then yeah, go ahead and do the garden thing. But if it's not your hobby, then it's going to be a chore and you're not going to like it. So I don't suggest do the food security thing. Transportation. Uh, we lost a vehicle. We had a Mitsubishi Lancer that, that broke its timing belt. So we went to buy a vehicle a couple months ago and we decided to go with the electric vehicle. The range is only 100 miles, but that works in Hawaii. Uh, we charge it at home. The refuel time is actually 8 to 16 hours because we charge it on a 110 uh, plug, just a standard wall outlet, whereas level 2 charge is a 220 volt outlet. So we really like it. Um, kind of a big driver for me in, in purchasing this vehicle was all the vehicles I've owned to date 
have had some problems with these things oil filter you know you got to change that all the time i had a head gasket go out timing belt just broke on our vehicle transmission slipping exhaust have holes in it you know all these problems you don't have that with an ev these are all the parts that you don't have in an electric vehicle so this is ieee did a presentation in new york they said these are the vehicles the electric vehicles that we think should be out in the market at these dates uh, well we took a look at Hawaii's market and these are not available and really the only two that were available in Hawaii were the uh, Mitsubishi My EV and the Nissan Leaf the My EV looks like a moon vehicle it's a little bit cheaper but we, we decided to go with the Leaf and here it is it's silver total cost after taxes and licensing and whatnot was 41,000 which is a little steep for a uh, uh, you know, family vehicle, but we got two percent, uh, two point nine percent financing on it. Our payments are a little over seven hundred bucks. Our rebate was twelve thousand dollars. So the state gives you a grant of forty five hundred dollars. The federal government gives you a seventy five hundred tax uh, dollar tax credit. So that really helps to make those payments early on, and we think it, it'll pay itself off uh, in due time. These are all the charging stations in on Oahu. So we have a lot of places where we can plug in if we need to. We've only really used those once or twice since we had the vehicle. We've had it for two months now. But really, we always use this free parking thing. So City and County Honolulu gives you free parking at any meter, any parking lot. Uh, and the Honolulu Airport gives you that as well. So you're not paying that 15 bucks a day for parking at the airport. We can go on a vacation for a week, come back, and drive out for free. Uh, Hawaiian Electric also has this time of use meter. We haven't signed up for this yet. We're still crunching the data. And essentially, if you charge your vehicle after 9 p.m., it's six cents cheaper uh, than uh, standard rates. And to, to offset that from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., you're paying five cents extra to use power. And then uh, for, our, for our house that has PV on it, during, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., we're getting two cents extra for that PV. So it's kind of a game, you know, you, you got to play it and, and make it worthwhile, but uh, we're thinking about it, we're crunching the numbers and seeing whether or not we're interested in going with this program. So here's the credits, $7,500 from the feds until 200,000 vehicles are sold per manufacturer. They're nowhere near that right now, so don't worry about that. But the Hawaii state incentive is $4,500. That expires in November 1st. And subject to funding. I've charted the funding uh, that they've uh, shown to the public to date and here it is. It started out as a million dollars. They they seeded the funding uh, several times along the way but it's down below 400,000 right now and uh, I'd say if you want to get an electric vehicle you got to get this done. So here's in summary this is what we spent. Most of, it most of the cost was the electric vehicle the photovoltaics and the water heater were other major contributors. And these are the incentives. Photovoltaics are no-brainer, water heater, no-brainer at this point. Electric vehicle, I think we're still early adopters, but uh, I, I would suggest to do that. So we used some of that money to renovate our kitchen. So you can see that uh, almost completely done on the right there in that picture. And we're also thinking about, well, you know, what if we got off the grid entirely? Well, we're only paying 20 bucks a month to be on the grid, so there's no monetary motivation for that right now. And then what about being off the sewer grid? We're paying close to 100 bucks a month to be on the, the sanitary sewer grid. So there's monetary motivation, but permitting and, and you know, dealing with that waste stream, uh, yeah, we're not sure if we want to take that step yet. And that's it. That's the whole presentation. I appreciate you guys sitting through this. And uh, let me know if you like it. If you want more of these, I, I like the idea of you being able to watch this on your own time. I think it's more sustainable that way instead of getting everybody in the room at the same time. Uh, so, you know, comment, let me know, and appreciate your time.